put on the live board this morning, but it won't appear until midnight tonight. Uh, those are the next two homework sets. Nothing's due today. Um, something's pretty fast back today. Section two, section one. And those are the answers to the odd number problems. Uh, the odd number problems out of chapter three, which includes, this is all of chapter three home, uh, chapter three home. Okay, and that's pretty much on Bernoulli equation. So if you have any questions, I'll drop by the office and I get enough questions for the class, the homework. Because it should be, we've covered all the material already. Okay, now, I'll get the exams back later, they're up here. We finished chapter three. We're starting chapter four. We're still, of course, talking about fluids in motion. Chapter four is titled Fluid Kinematics. So kinematics means motion uh, without regard to what caused the motion. We don't, we're not studying the forces yet, it's just we're studying motion. And motion is characterized by distances, velocities, and accelerations. Okay, so it's a fairly short chapter. It's not a very mathematical chapter. It could be, but we're not going to treat it that way. But there's a lot of definitions in there which we have to, to uh, assimilate. So there's a lot of terminology in there which is important when you study fluid mechanics. We um, start out and uh, this was mentioned earlier in, in the book too, but I'll describe it now. Now, if we wanted to, we don't do that. If we wanted to, we could follow water molecules as they move through a pipe, for instance, as they move through some kind of a fitting, maybe a venturi nozzle. We could follow individual particles of water, molecules of water. Not very good for us in engineering uh, because there's a lot of particles in there. We don't, we don't take that approach. That approach is called a microscopic approach because you're following the individual particles with their velocities and so on and so forth, accelerations. Rather than that, we <coughs> study average properties of a small group of particles, many, many particles in a small volume. Properties like what? Well, like I said, velocity, density, um, the mass, of course. These properties then are assumed to vary continuously throughout the fluid because we're looking at a small volume containing a lot of molecules of the fluid. We call this a continuum approach for studying this continuum because the properties vary continuously, continuum. Okay, so we're not going to obviously follow individual particles of water as they flow through a pipe. Uh, we'll look at this continuum approach. Now, the second thing is there's a couple of different ways to look at properties. We'll start off with what's called the Eulerian approach. Uh, properties, a function of time and position in space. And this is a looking at a fixed point in space. We can contrast that to Lagrangian approach. Uh, 
hollow individual fluid particles. as they move about. And this is, again, it's a function of only time. So you can consider that, consider that to be like tagging a fluid particle. The uh, example that our textbook gives is smoke from chimney. Smoke from chimney. <clears throat> if you want, when a particle of smoke leaves a chimney, I take out my can of spray paint, and I, go, I give it a pretty color there. And, and I watch that particle smoke as it goes up here and keeps going. I'm following individual fluid particles. I tag the smoke particle with spray paint and watched it go out. Lagrangian approach. Other times, I look at a fixed point in space. Okay. I'm going to look at this point, x equal 10, y equal 30. I stay there with time. I stay there. And I watch as the particles go by. Does the temperature change? Maybe. Does the density change? Probably. So I sit at one point in space and look at how properties vary. As a function of if I move the point down to here, of course it's going to change. Okay. So. By Larry and approach. So those are the two approaches you can take uh, to study fluid uh, mechanics. Usually, we engineers use the Eulerian approach, but um, sometimes we look at Lagrangian, and I'll mention that as we go as we go through this later on in chapter four. Okay, let's. Uh, look at a streamline. So here's some streamline. Here's the uh, velocity vector, don't forget, is tangent to the streamline. This is the s direction. This is the velocity vector, v. Okay. I'm going to blow that up. Here's the uh, velocity vector v. Let's make it even bigger than that. So I can show you more clearly. So here's the velocity vector v. Here's the x component of that velocity vector u. Here's V. Now I show the S coordinate, the unit vector in the S direction, we'll just call it S. So here is a DS differential distance in the S direction. There's a component in the Y direction, DY. There's a component in the X direction, DX. You can see those two are collinear. It's right triangles, similar right triangles. <coughs> the y-axis is to the x-axis as the y-axis is to the x-axis. Okay, so d y over d x equals v over u. Vertical d y over horizontal d x. Vertical little v, horizontal little u. Don't forget, little v is the minor equation. The y coordinate of the velocity vector u is the x uh, uh, of the velocity vector. Uh, so here is what we want to look at then. 
That's the equation of the stream. Okay. But there are other lines besides streamlines. Let's talk about a path line. Path line. individual particle takes as it moves through the flow field. You follow that particle as it moves through the flow field. And the last one, a streak line. Line. Instantaneous line whose points are occupied by <coughs> all particles originating from, the, from some specified point in the flow field. We'll do a problem that shows the differences in just a minute. But for right now, there's how we can look at different at the flow field. We can identify streamlines, path lines, street lines. They're all different except steady flow, they're all the same. They're coincident. All the lines would be the same if the flow is steady. Okay, let's take a look at an example then. Um, um, maybe I'll erase this. That's okay. We'll put it over here. <clears throat> let's see. We'll do 411, and I think for oh, so yeah. Let's check that. You got 412 at home. So it's similar to 412 for homework. The velocity field is given by this. It's two-dimensional velocity field. I and J. Okay, X minus one, Y plus one. Right. Okay. The problem says plot the streamlines. We're just going to find the equation of the streamlines. So find the equation of the streamlines. Okay, well, there's a streamline. There's the equation of the streamline. So, we can start off identifying uh, what little u is. 
little u is the x component of the velocity. That's equal to x. Little v is the y component of velocity. There it is. So dy dx then Okay, is V over U. X is canceled out. Okay. Now, we Go ahead and separate the variables here. So we get dy, y plus 1 equal x minus 1 dx. Now, we integrate both sides of the equation. Integrate 1 over whatever, 1 over y dy. Okay, that's your log of y. Okay, so when we integrate, I'll, I'll say integrate. natural log of y plus 1 equal x squared over 2 minus x plus a constant of uh, integration. Now I didn't put it up on what was given, but this was also given. Streamline goes through the origin. Okay, so at x equals zero, y equals zero, okay, natural log of one, I'll put it up here. Which of course is zero, is equal to x squared zero minus x. zero plus c. Conclusion then is the constant c is equal to zero. Okay, back to here again. Here's our equation, put c equals zero. Take the inverse of both sides. Inverse of natural law here. We'll take it just y plus one. Take the exponential both sides. Exponential, and this is our x squared. One half x squared minus x. And bring the bring the one on the other side. And that becomes a minus one. Yep, I'm not going to go through the whole plot, but if you want to plot it, here's the coordinate axis. It looks, it uh, goes through, of course it goes through zero, zero. Reaches its low point at uh, x equal one, y equal minus 0.5. So about here. So it comes up like this. That's the streamline there. Then. Mm -hmm. How'd you get the negative on the exponent? On which one? On the exponent. On the exponential. Oh, yes. thanks, 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 thanks. Think about my minus one there. Thank you. Okay. So the problems over here, a couple of them go through the similar thing of this is do some things with the streamlines, okay? Now let's see, I'm gonna save that. Right, now I'm gonna go over <coughs> an example of a problem for homework, which 
probably is one of the more difficult problems in chapter four of Homer. So I'm going to go over an example to help explain problem 412 of Homer. This is 411, not a sign. 412 is a sign. typically word problems. Okay, this is very similar to the one that was assigned to Homer, so I, I made up one which is a little bit simpler, but it demonstrates the method you should use to solve that problem for Homer. And there's no picture given on that. line. First of all, notice it's a line. It's a line whose points are occupied by all particles originating from some specified point in the flow field. Originating from where he told us x equals zero, y equals zero. For how long the smoke lasts, steam lasts for three hours. Then what happens? It stops. It stops. When the steam comes out of the smokestack for the first three hours. Here's its velocity of every particle leaving the smokestack. Because this is five hours, this is three hours. Okay, so let's start drawing the picture how it looks then. Choose the coordinate axis. Zero, zero. This is x, <coughs> x, y, y is a major variable. Yeah. 
So this is minus 10, 20, 30, 40. I want to go more than that. All right, this is, um, I'm going down to 40. I'm going to make this bigger because I want to emphasize this. You can't draw these things too small. 10, 20, 30, 40. And in the uh, x direction, let's see here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. velocity, by the way, this velocity is um, miles, yeah, miles per hour. That's the wind speed. So uh, after, take five hours, after five hours, five times 10, 50, in what direction? X, okay, 50. Y direction, five hours times five miles per hour, 25, where? Down. Okay. There's the first particle of steam that left the smokestack after five hours. There it is. Okay. Let's take the last one that comes out. Last one comes out three hours. What's its velocity? Here. For how long? Uh, I'm looking at five hours. The last one came out at three. Two times five. Ten. There's the last particle that left the smokestack of steam. There's where it is after five hours. Okay. Obviously, I can take any point you want. Take the one that left after an hour and a half. Where is it? Right in the middle here. So there is the line. It's a straight line. That is the streak line. What is it? Show it. Was it show? Here's again. At what instant? At what instant? Well, the instant is at time equal five. Okay. Whose points occupy this line? All the points on the line are all the particles originating at that specified point zero zero. That is the streak line then. at time equal five hours. You want just, I'll, I'll just do one more just so you get the idea. You, you want to do it for the first one hour? One hour. Particle left, time zero. After one hour, how far did it go? 10 in the X minus five in the Y. Okay, 10 in the X minus five in the Y. There's the streak line. For one hour, one hour, you get the point. But it's not, it's not easy, because it is a lot of thought up here and not much math. You know, two times 10, five times five, blah, 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 you know. No, it, you gotta think it out. Okay, that's the street line at one hour. All right, 
now, now comes this part, okay? Just five hours, okay? After five hours, the wind shifts. Now, the wind is going at a velocity of five miles per hour this way. Well, obviously, every particle on that streak line now has a velocity this way. Shift it. Okay, five miles per hour. How many more hours? Five more hours. We were at five. Now we're going to 10 hours. Five more hours times five miles an hour. Add 25 in the x direction to every point on that line. Okay, 25 and 50, 75. Twenty-five and twenty, forty-five. Draw the line. Of course they're parallel, they have to be. Street line. At time equal ten hours. Path line. The locus of points traveled by a given particle as it moves through the flow field. I'm going to take the particle that leaves the smokestack at time zero, and I'm going to watch it up until 10 hours. I'm going to watch it. I'm tagging that particle. I'm spray painting that one particle. Okay. Here it comes up. Here's the velocity. Comes down here. Keeps going down there. There it is. Uh, after five hours, now it makes a somewhat of a left turn. There it is. After 10 hours, okay, take your finger. That's what it did. How far did I go? 25, 10, 25. It got down there um, at uh, 50. Then what it do? Uh oh, there it went that way now, out to 75. There's a streak line. There's a path line. Oh, there's tons of path lines. Take the particle that left here, that left here at time equal three hours. The last guy out the door left at three hours, okay? Here he comes. He stopped here. Then what do you do? Hang partial left. Stop. There's the particle that left uh, after uh, three hours. You can play the same game. Any particle leaving from zero to three hours, tag that particle and follow it in the flow field. Okay, I'll do one more. Um, can we see any streamlines here? Well, yeah, we can. That particle there went to there. Uh, in five hours. 
this particle went to there in five hours, and so on, and so on, and so on. Conclusion, those are streamlines. Okay, we can beat that thing around pretty much, but I wanted to go through, kind of emphasize to you the difference in the three. Um, is this a steady flow problem? Oh no, oh no. Look at this, it's not a steady flow problem. Can we use the conclusion, if it's steady flow, all the lines are the same? No, we can't, they're all different. Here's a streak line, streak line, streak line, stream line, path line, so on and so forth. If you follow that one, problem 412 for Homer should be somewhat easier. Okay. The math is ridiculously simple. That's all in the thought process. And it, it's not easy, I know. But that's why we're doing it. This is called nomenclature. If you don't know my language, when I speak it, then you can't do well when I give you a test problem. You have to understand how I speak. So if I say to you, plot the path lines, you know what I want. Or stream lines, or streak lines, you know what I want that way. Okay. I'm sure you have some questions when you work for 12, because 412 is a little more difficult. Okay, now, that pretty much covers the first half of chapter four. Uh, the first third, there's really three parts to it. Now the middle part, we're talking about kinematics. Kinematics talks about accelerations and velocities without regard to what causes motion, without regard to what causes the motion. Now, we'll look at, we've talked about velocity, we've talked about streamlines, path lines, street lines, those are something about the path that blue particles take. But let's do the math now. This is the general form of the fluid acceleration. Vector, definition, time rate of change of velocity. Three components, velocity u, x direction, v, y direction, w, z direction. And uh, Note that the velocity can be a function of x, y, z, and time. So we expand dv. is dv dt. dx dt, little u, dy dt, little v, dz dt, 
little w. These guys here are called convective accelerations. This guy here is called local acceleration. Okay, the velocity is given for this problem. Velocity vector uh, x over t times unit vector i x direction. Let's see what he wants us to do. X is in feet, t is in seconds, okay. There are five parts to it. I'm going to do two parts of it. Uh, one's a plot. You can plot that. You can plot that. But part uh, C and part D. So part C, find local and convective accelerations. And part D. <coughs> Acceleration of any particle should be zero. Okay, um, again, just like uh, over here, we see that um, uh, u is uh, our x component, so our u is x over t, uh, and partial. Let's see, our, our, okay, here's our here's our local one. Uh, this becomes, take the component and the x direction is a vector, take the x component, that, that velocity then becomes u, so it's du dt. Local acceleration, du dt. Okay. So the local is minus x over t squared. The convective here's the convective. Don't forget B is zero, W is zero, U is not zero. Okay, so U D U D X. U X over T. P u d x one over t. You give me an x. You give me a time. I'll tell you a local acceleration and a convective acceleration. That's part C. Okay. Part uh, D. 
for D, show the acceleration. Okay, the acceleration then. Okay, uh, local acceleration minus x t squared. Convective acceleration u x over t. du uh, dx du dx over t. Minus x over t squared plus x over t squared zero. The acceleration of any fluid particle in the field is zero. So again, you have to know the nomenclature. If I asked you to find the convective acceleration, you know what I'm asking for. The local acceleration, you know what I'm asking for. The acceleration, here's the acceleration right here, local convective. This is in one dimension only function of x. Okay, and we'll use that later on in other chapters, but just, as I said, this chapter is a lot about nomenclature, what these words all mean, what local and convective means, and so on. Any question on that right now?